Hi, I'm Sanjali Ganesh, a digital media specialist for the STEM e Youth Career Development Program. Welcome to the 13th episode of the STEM e Interviews. Thank you, Sanjali. I'm Dr. Rob Pyatt. I'm an assistant professor at Kane University, and I'm director of the Kane Clinical Diagnostic Laboratory. I'm happy to be here with you today. Awesome. So let's get started. Um, can you take us through your background, where you started, and how you got to where you are now? Oh, yeah. Um, it's like most people, it's a long, winding road. Um, so I started as an undergraduate interested in biology and medicine. I thought I might go to medical school, but while I was in college, I got really interested in research. Um, so I graduated with a BS in biology. And then shortly after that, um, I started a job working as a technician in a laboratory doing stem cell biology. So we were looking at uh, isolating cells from our blood or our bone marrow and testing different ways that we could grow them, hopefully to use in things like bone marrow transplantation. Um, I got my master's part time while I was working there. And through that, I decided the perfect uh, merging of biology and medicine was to do a PhD in pathology. So I went to Ohio State, um, studied pathology where I had some work with viruses, had some work with cancer, and had some work with human genetics and really loved human genetics. So after my PhD, I did a postdoc um, because I was always interested in teaching. So. Uh, the postdoc was about half of a usual research postdoc where I was doing lots of studies in human genetics, but I also learned about teaching and taught a lot as well. Um, and that led me back to Ohio State then to do a fellowship to be a genetics laboratory director. And that's what I am today. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, <laughs> it's really long. Yeah. I will be the first to admit that. But I think that's important for a lot of students to realize. Um, a lot of kids think that your career is like this straight line path that you decide very early in your life what you want to do and you study that and you do it for the rest of your life. But life is really about preparing yourself for opportunities. And I'd like to think my career really shows that. Yes, for sure. So um, was there, I know you mentioned that there was a specific moment in college when you decided that you wanted to do something more in molecular genetics, like in something like that. It was there like, could you walk us through like the moment and like how you came to that decision? Well, and, and it was interesting because I consider myself to be a people person. Um, but I had done some rotations with friends of our family, my family, who are physicians, and I liked what they did, but I was more interested in the science of it than I was directly interacting with the patients and treating them. So as an undergraduate, as I was taking these courses in molecular biology, molecular genetics, where we're looking at the human genome and how that genome copies itself and the enzymes that are involved and, and how the enzymes can make mistakes and that can lead to then diseases or predispositions to things like cancer or heart disease. That's really what got me passionate. Um, so that led me then into laboratory medicine where I get to conv combine the, uh, the science of genetics with uh, a laboratory career. So I'm also doing medicine and giving back to people at the same time. Yeah. And you also mentioned that you are now teaching. Is there, why did you decide to do that? Well, and I think that relates more to the people, the direct personal contact uh, that I'm interested in. I've always had a passion for teaching. That's why I sought out a very special postdoc where I could be trained in that and in innovative teaching methods, not just standing up in front of a class and lecturing, but more activity-based teaching where teaching becomes an active process where you're not just sitting in the classroom passively taking notes, you're actively doing things to make sure that the students understand the topics and the concepts you're talking about. And if you discover they don't, you can fix that right then. 
instead of waiting weeks or months until they would take an exam and then realizing, oh, my students didn't get it at all. Um, so teaching has always been a passion of mine. And I'm, it, when I step into the classroom, those are usually the best parts of my day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I always enjoy stepping into the classroom to learn as well. Um, <laughs> So you also mentioned that you were a your first job was a t as a technician in the laboratory. Um, so of course that's one job in the field. Were there any other internships or jobs that you went through? Um, well, like a lot of people, I've held a lot of jobs, although not necessarily are they related to science or education. Um, kind of as a bridge between my undergraduate and then working as a laboratory technician, I actually worked as a pharmacy technician in a hospital for a year on night shift. Um, so it was a great opportunity um, to see a more broad spectrum, a lot of the different stuff that they did in the pharmacy to get to know the pharmacist on a personal level and have them teach me what their job was like and some of the math and the chemistry. So that was a really cool experience, even though I decided that wasn't necessarily something I wanted to do for a job. Um, the other jobs I've had have been an interesting mix. I worked as a camp counselor for a number of years in high school. Um, I was a paid actor for a while. I've always had a passion for drama and theater and productions. Um, so I, I've worked a lot of different jobs <laughs> throughout my career. Yeah, the whole variety, acting, <laughs> you are now a researcher, you're a teacher, right. you get all of them. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Well, and I like to think that uh, I enjoy a variety of things. And honestly, I think most people do as well. And in my career, I've just managed to be able to be involved in a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're like a jack of all trades. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there used to be a term for that. The, the common term was called a polymath. And some of our biggest geniuses that we really revere uh, were people who were polymaths, who were good at multiple different things. But we really don't talk about that as much in today's world. You know, you're expected to get one job and one career. Maybe you have one hobby, but I think there are a whole lot more people out there that have likes and interests and skills in multiple areas that we just don't highlight as much. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> along the lines, so like, I know you've gone through many different jobs, but with your current job now, and maybe if you want to mention a few of your past jobs, like what did you do on a daily basis? Yeah, so in a, in a similar way to what we've talked about, I wear a lot of hats right now. Um, so I'm an assistant professor. So that means in my academic job, I do a lot of teaching. Uh, I do a lot of research with students and those students can be undergraduate or master's degree level students. Um, I work in our institutional review board. So that's a board that meets to review research projects that involve human subjects to make sure that they're being conducted in an appropriate manner. Um, and as I mentioned in the intro, I'm also the director of the Kane Clinical Diagnostic Laboratory. So that's a laboratory we've set up on campus to be a clinical diagnostic lab. So. Um, we first set it up to meet some of the needs around the pandemic. So we do a lot of testing for COVID-19 for people who live within our county or for students or faculty at the university. And we're expanding into other tests like genetics, like toxicology, like other infectious diseases. So again, it, it's a fun mixture of teaching, of research, and of clinical service too. Mm -hmm. Do you ever get like overwhelmed with it all? Or is it just like, <laughs> just go from one thing to the next and it's just like, la di da di da I love all um, this. You know, I am, I am no Superman. So I, I definitely at times get busy and get overwhelmed. And I think there's no better example of that than the pandemic right now. Um, there are a lot of people who are very worried as we head into the fall semester that our college instructors and faculty are really burned out. And, and I see that in the people around me and I see it in myself as well. Um, so you try to focus on some self-care, making sure you get rest, you try to get some time away, whether it's to exercise, just taking a walk around the neighborhood, just something to keep your mind fresh. 
Um, but one of the things that I find helps me there is having different things to do. So if I get frustrated or burned out on one project that I'm working on, I can set that aside for a little while, you know, pick up a class I've got to put together or some data from a research project and just focus on something else for a little bit, then go back to that first project and, and I can attack it a little better. Yeah, for sure. And on a different note, have you ever gotten to travel for any of these professions? Yeah, um, I have and it's been really cool. Um, I've presented at scientific conferences around the UK. Um, I've been a guest of the Edinburgh Science Festival twice. So I got to travel to Scotland, um, present some science outreach genetics kind of talks there. Um, I was written up in the paper. Uh, so that was really, really cool. Yeah, Scotland. That's like... <laughs> <laughs> it was Very wonderful. Perfect. Yeah, it was absolutely wonderful. I, and I was all set to go back when the pandemic hit and things just haven't come together where I can think about it again yet. So hopefully one day, I keep hoping. Yes, oh my gosh, Scotland. I've heard that it's such a beautiful place. It is, well, and if you get into the sciences, especially science research, um, conferences are held around the United States, around the world. And part of what we need to do is travel to those, not only to present our own findings and our own work, but to learn from other people who are presenting there. So travel is really part of the job. And that's, again, one of the reasons why I love it. Yeah, it's so true to like learn everything. You need to travel, experience yeah. different yeah, get, things. Get that different perspective. Yeah. Just different perspectives, of course. And I'm sure like in the classroom when you're with your students, you always learn from them as well too. Oh yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, very much so, yeah. So is there anything that you love about that or anything that, or in the classroom many times, like anything that you dislike? Um, well, I don't know there's anything I inherently dislike, um, but like you said, the, the whole learning process you know, anytime you're in that classroom with a group of students, you're learning from them as they're learning from you. And they will surprise you with questions you weren't expecting, whether that's something they didn't understand and you're surprised because you had thought you had structured a lesson plan to really instill that information well, um, whether it's a new perspective that you didn't think of before. I, but that's the fun of it. That's why Everybody who has recorded lectures for a year now has said how frustrating that is because there's not that interpersonal connection. And that's what makes a classroom or a live theater so much fun. It's that electricity that people generate when they get together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what about your other roles? What do you dislike and like about those? Um, let's see, with being a laboratory director, um, it's not like a research lab. Research labs, you can kind of pop up anywhere and you can go. With the diagnostic laboratory, there are a lot of rules and regulations you have to follow. That's government rules and regulations, state rules and regulations, sometimes the rules and regulations for companies you have to follow. And part of my job is making sure that we do all of that because we have to meet those standards to be able to report the results out that we do. Um, so it's incredibly important work, although not necessarily the most exciting at times. Um, you know, with being a faculty member, um, I'm just really busy. And especially with around the needs of the pandemic, um, making sure that, you know, even though we've been teaching remotely, even though my students may be in difficult situations where they themselves are sick or they have family members that are sick that I'm trying to work with them to get them what they need to learn. That's been pretty challenging too. Um, but my hope is, and I tell this to, to a lot of the students I have, that if you can walk out of the building at the end of the day, and you may be exhausted, but at least if you can feel like you've done something to make other people's lives, and it doesn't matter who, but other people's lives a little bit better, then that exhaustion is okay. It's those days where you feel like you're not accomplishing anything or you really feel bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And 
So is there anything that you think is special or important about your current career or careers in this case? <laughs> um, special or important? You know, I, I don't know that I, I'm hesitant to say like there's something special about it because in some way that feels like, ooh, other people can't do it. And that's not true at all. Um, what I want to do and, and why I'm interested in education and why I do outreach is to try to try to share with people what my career is like, what my field's like, to get them interested if it's a topic they're interested in and show them you can do this just as well as I can. Um, there aren't a ton of laboratory director jobs around the country, but there are even fewer people who are qualified for those. So if that's something a person's interested in, it's a great career for them to go into. Um, so what I try to do is use myself just as like a case to show them, well, this is what you could do if this is the kind of career you're interested in. Um, but I will say, I think I get to do really cool stuff all the time and that keeps me excited. Um, you know, one thing that I'm working on now, there's an award-winning author, uh, she writes, horror fiction, who contacted me to do a beta read of her new novel to make sure that the science, while it may not be 100% accurate, is at least plausible because she's writing fiction. Um, so I was working on that today um, around the house, just relaxing. So that's, you know, that's nothing connected directly with my job. It's nothing connected directly with my career. But again, because of the things that I've tied together throughout my life, I was in a good place to be able to offer to do something like that. So that makes it fun. Yeah, it's also abstract, but then it all just comes together. Like, <laughs> right, really, yeah. That's, it's awesome that you have all of these different experiences that you can tie them all together. Well, um, and you know, for, for me, just like we were talking about travel, I mean, life is really about experiences. What can you do to, to appreciate what this incredibly diverse and interesting world around us is? So I'd like to think that I'm open to those opportunities when they pop up, and I've been lucky to have some fun ones throughout my career. Yeah. And speaking of travel, I know the COVID-19 pandemic has hit you with like you can't travel as much and I'm sure there are many challenges. What are, besides COVID-19 and the restrictions that it's placed on your job, what other challenges have you faced? Um, oh boy. <laughs> um, well, there are huge challenges with COVID-19 that have spilled over into everything. Um, just as we saw um, early in the pandemic, there were supply chain issues. You know, people couldn't get things like paper towels and toilet paper. And the same was true for the lab. We had a difficult time getting a lot of the basic plastic equipment that we use on a day-to-day -day basis to test samples. Um, so that's been really challenging. Um, you know, just dealing with the organization of how we get a sample from where a patient is to our lab, that's been really challenging. Mm -hmm. um, just trying to immediately shift from, I'm in the middle of teaching a class in person to, oh, now I have to teach it within like 24 hours online, whether that's in person, synchronously online, or starting to record lectures for students to watch whenever they had an opportunity. Um, the, the last two years have been just incredible in the amount of stuff that has been thrown at all of us, students, instructors, scientists, medical professionals. And I think it's a real testament to, to everyone how we've all shifted and adjusted to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm sure there've been many people to help you with that. And I'm sure you've done a lot of it on your own, but like there must've been like many people helping you with that. So like among the people who you've worked with, or worked for, who do you admire the most and who has helped you the most? Well, and you are absolutely right. And that's sort of one of the unfair things about me sitting here and saying all of these wonderful things that I've done. When I say dir I direct a laboratory, it's not just me. I have a group of nine people who work for me from a supervisor to a molecular technical expert 
to the people who actually receive our samples and scan them in using like uh, barcode scanners that you see in a grocery store to our technicians that actually work at the bench performing those tests. So I'm here talking about the successes really of a huge group of people, just like you say, and I am totally indebted to them. Um, as far as the people that I admire, um, I think I mentioned earlier that uh, when I started my career, I had a job as a technician in a stem cell biology lab and got my master's part time. And my boss in that lab, Dr. Edward Schroer, he really taught me how to be a scientist, even though I had a great undergraduate experience. I came out doing very well in my classes. He was really the individual that sat me down and said, look, this is practically what it's like to be a research scientist. And I am, I have always been totally indebted to him. Um, it was kind of fun, um, three or four years ago, probably four years ago now because of the pandemic, um, my family and I went to a soccer game back in the city where uh, he lives and where I was, and we bumped into him and his son at the match. So it was fun to sit with him and just get caught up because I, I hadn't seen him for a few years. Yeah. Also, oh my. my thesis advisor in grad school, Dr. Tom Pryor, he was a fantastic mentor and really taught me how to be a clinical laboratory director. So those two people have been hugely, hugely important to me. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I know that now you're probably on the other end of the spectrum, like mentoring many students and just like teaching them about like you achieved so many great goals and now I'm sure you're like mentoring many students. So like what advice would you give a middle or high school student who's interested in pursuing a career like similar to yours? Yeah, um, obviously you're heading out to college. Um, they're gonna look for programs that have really good science departments, whether that's biology or chemistry or biochemistry. Um, and you're going to do really well in your coursework because you got to have that basic knowledge, but also look for opportunities. And it doesn't matter what school you're at, but just look at opportunities that they have to do other things outside of your classes, whether that's research, whether it's traveling abroad, whether it's going to scientific conferences, whether it's getting involved in writing a paper, or even like if you're interested in science communication, trying to write some for a school newspaper or a school website. Look for really cool, really fun opportunities like that. And those will be the things that really kickstart your careers. Yeah. And you mentioned pursuing your PhD. Many students question whether to pursue this pathway. What is your advice to them? Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of debate on, is it useful to get a PhD or not? And it really depends on your reasons behind it and what you wanna do with it. Some people will get their PhD sort of as their own intellectual challenge to say, can I do this? They may not necessarily want to go on and have a full-blown career completely focused on that PhD. And that's completely fine. I would just make sure the person really has some relatively well thought out plans for what they want to do afterwards. Um, in my case, to be a laboratory director, a PhD is an integral stepping point to that. Um, you can get an MD, you can get a DO, you can get a PhD. Um, but for the in a lab, it's less important to know a lot of the patient centric education that you'll get with an MD or a DO. I was more focused on like how a disease actually infects or um, causes people to have symptoms. Uh, and you get a lot of that from your PhD programs. Um, so it was, it, I had to do that to, to get it where I wanted to go in my career. Um, if you want a career in research, a PhD, you know, where you want to be um, the person writing the grants and coming up with the ideas, that's what you want to do with the PhD. But if you're more interested in actually being at the bench and getting your hands dirty and doing the work, then I don't know that you'd necessarily need a PhD for that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's important for, for people to sit down and even literally just make a list of what are the things you enjoy, what parts of jobs are those involved with, and then looking at what kind of education do you need to get there. Mm -hmm. 
And is there any advice you would give to your past self or something that you would do differently? And what would that be? Um, I think the advice I would give to my past self, um, there were a few times during my careers, uh, during my career where I had to make very difficult decisions that not only impacted me, but even as a student impacted the labs and the scientists I was working with. Um, and I think a lot of people would shy away from those kinds of difficult decisions. And they were very hard to make at the time. But I think I would go back and pat myself on the back and say, listen, you are absolutely doing the 100% right thing. I know it's hard. I know it's challenging. I know it's painful. But in the end, it will absolutely be in your best interest. Yeah, for sure. And do you have any plans for the future? Like, what are those? Like, I know <laughs> the pandemic is over. I'm sure uh, you want to travel. But um, yes. what do you plan? Um, boy, yeah, I'm so wrapped up in the pandemic right now. Um, it's I'd like to get back to um, doing a lot more of the science outreach work that I do, like at the Edinburgh Science Festival. Um, almost all of that has gone away because we weren't going to places where a large number of people were, were collecting. So I hope those things open up again, like opportunities at science museums and science pubs and science festivals. Um, I'd like to travel. Um, my oldest son is a senior in high school, so he'll be starting college next year. And we've been trying to do college visits, and that's really hard right now. Um, the few that we can get in, you know, sometimes you can't get everywhere on the college, like you can't see a dorm. Um, so, and sometimes you can't see anything. They'll have a virtual tour and that's it. So that's been challenging. So I'm hoping the next two years can be much more of a smoother transition for him. Um, yeah, so th those are a few things. Yes, I'm sure there are many more. Well, thank you. Dr. Rob Pyatt for your time and thank you to our viewers. Be sure to check out our other episodes and subscribe to our channel and stay up to date with all our upcoming events and activities. Um, you can do this by following our social media and signing up for our email list. Check the description for all links and we will see you next time.